Maneuver your pirate ship out of dangerous waters. This is our review of Sail. Sail is a two-player cooperative trick-taking game about moving your pirate ship to the end of the board. And at first glance, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it because it had two things I'm not a fan of. Cooperative and trick-taking. <laughs> I've become a big fan of trick-taking games, and this one even made me like cooperative games. Tell you all about it after this quick how to play. At the start of each round, players are dealt nine cards to form their hands. Then players will take turns playing cards, with the second player having to match the color of the first player if they have it. The highest number card that matches the lead color wins the round, otherwise known as the trick. Players will then check to see if the symbols played match one of the combination pairs that can lead to possible actions. Some of the actions are to move their ship in several possible directions or to take on damage. The round ends when one player wins their fourth trick. Players continue playing until they reach the end of the board and win, or round five ends and they lose, or they take too much damage from the Kraken and lose. I really enjoyed this small box game, even though it's only a two player game and it's a trick taking game. I've really come to enjoy trick taking games that we've been playing a lot recently, especially Cat in the Box and The Crew and things like that. This is also cooperative like The Crew so that you have to work together, but you can't communicate and you gotta get your ship to the end without taking damage from the Kraken, without running into the rocks, without taking too long and running out of time by going too many rounds. You have to strategically coordinate who's gonna win and when so that you can steer the boat along the path and get to the end. I like how you have to play the tricks and it's kind of like a mm, mm, like you can't say anything even though you're kind of hinting, but you're also trying to play and match the symbols so that you can move the boat. And some symbols, if you get really lucky, you can move it forward instead of to the sides and you can really jump ahead and catch you up or take a big lead. So I like a lot of the things going on in this small box game. Whenever we go to Gen Con, we always walk by the all play booth and I always see all their like lineup. And I'm, I, I always like, I'm like, oh, that looks cool. You know, the artwork, I don't know, something draws, just draws me there. I'm like, oh, okay, what's this about? So all these games kind of packed up in small boxes. I like it. We don't always like, oh, gimme, 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 and like buy a bunch of them. But this one, you know, a lot of green, a lot of like sea theme, pirates. So I'm like, okay, let's give it a try. Now, like I said at the top, when I first read it, I'm like, oh, Two-player, cooperative, trick-taking. Not usually at the top of my list of games, but obviously I'll give it a try. With all that said, I did have a lot of fun and it really wanted me to like, okay, all right, let's go again. All right, but this time, don't die. <laughs> like, you know, we're, we're, we're really getting in each other's head. Like, okay, okay, whatever, fine. Next, you know, we'll do another one. When it's like that, maybe those kind of move up the list a little bit. I think one of the big things I like about co-op games is when you can't communicate. Like when we did the review of Alien, that game, you're allowed to talk in that one, but we added the house rule where you can't communicate, and then I really like that game. I like co-op games when you can't communicate and someone can't take the lead and be a quarterback. You gotta really work together like subconsciously or like <laughs> use your mind and kind of like think about how it's going. So I really like that type of co-op game. And this one hits that nail on the head. And this one's a little easier than the crew because that's multiplayer. So you're playing with a lot of people. And if one person's not feeling into it, then it can really kind of dampen how much fun you have with that game. Whereas this is a two player game. I hope you would know the other player that you're playing with. I think the two player even helps a lot with it being the co-op where you have to not speak and do that kind of thinking. So I think that this works really well. So the first couple times when we played it, right, I just, the one thing that stuck in my mind was there's a lot of ways to lose. <laughs> like the Kraken can get you if you're not past a storm, if you're just like by these islands so much, or even like as you play cards, they have like Kraken tentacles that can hit you too, or you hit them on the map. So a lot of ways that just really slow you down. So in the very beginning, it's a fun learning process. But then once you're, you know, once you start seeing eye to eye, you're like, okay, I get it. And then you can like go longer and longer as far as like how far you reach the port or the end of the board. I really enjoy that aspect of it. They have different setups that you can do with this. So you can place the rocks that you can hit in different spaces. You can place the Kraken tentacles in different spaces. And those have different setups based on the directions in the rule book, how that's gonna be formed when you're forming your board. So I like that. And it gets more difficult as you go because it is difficult when you first start because you gotta get on that same wavelength and there is a lot going on and there are a lot of ways to lose. But then when you do get on that wavelength, it becomes a little easier, but then the board can get harder. So it actually gets harder as it gets easier for you. So the more that you learn, the better you get at it, the harder 
where the game can get as you progress. So I like how it gets there. One thing that the game does have is pirate captains who have basically asymmetric powers. So I'm always a fan of that. And you know, we can see each other's asymmetric power too. So as long as you know what theirs is, they know what yours is. Sometimes that impacts that being on the same wavelength. Like, oh, okay, it doesn't matter who wins here. So we can just like, or, I know his power, so I definitely need to play this so we can use that power. So it's really interesting, the combinations of captains. I will say the first couple games we forgot about some of the powers and really just focus on the core part of the game. But then when it got harder and harder, it was like, oh wait, remember, you can do this. And so that really helped too and made it a little bit fun learning that. We backed this game on Kickstarter. It was a set of four. It was Sail, Chomp, Couture, and Mindspace. And I originally backed the Kickstarter because I thought Chomp looked fun. Dinosaur game. We really like dinosaur games. But that ended up being okay. You can check out our quick review for that with the link in the description below. But this one actually ended up being my favorite out of the four that, of that Kickstarter. So that says a lot that originally I was like, oh, well, we're getting it because it's part of the four. But, you know, trick taking, co-op, two player, we'll see. And it ends up being my favorite out of the four that we did. Uh, I think I'll go back to the captains and how they have the asymmetric powers. Those really are clutch whenever you get to a spot and you're like, oh no, we're stuck, but are we? <laughs> I really like how they work that co-op in here where you can't talk. And I like the feeling of when you are on the same page and everything is going right. That's a really good feeling and really satisfying feeling in a game when you get to that point. Then you feel like, okay, everything that the designers of this game want to happen are happening. We're on the same page, we're making it work. And it feels really good to win the game versus, oh yeah, we won, hooray, you know? <laughs> So what did you not like about this game? I think I hinted at it a little bit, but I think it's just so many ways that you can lose. Mostly when you're playing the cards, and even if you avoid all the traps on the board, the cards can still just do you damage too. So I think just so many ways to lose and keep track of like, eh, I don't know, it just gave me anxiety. The thing I didn't like about this game, I also talked about a little bit where I think that after a while it could lose its replay factor once you've beaten all the rounds or once you kind of get the point of it. It's like, okay, I get it. So I'm on that high of, oh, I really like this game. Let's keep playing it. But I think it can probably overstay its welcome and kind of get a little repetitive. Hasn't gotten there yet, but I can see that happening with this game. Overall, when I think about all the all play games or even just small box and then like cooperative two player trick taking, I had a lot of fun with this. I really liked the, the way they let me learn it and it was easy and I could just redo and let's do it again and start over. So the learning process is I think what I love the most. So I'm gonna give this one a seven and a half. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. It fulfills a lot of the things that I like about trick-taking games and adds some other things on top of it. Even makes me like co-op games a little bit. I do think it could overstay its welcome, but it hasn't yet. So right now I'm gonna say it's an eight. And that was our review of Sale. What'd you think? You think you're gonna have fun cracking this game open? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're enjoying our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel. Until next time, I'm Lee. I'm Kenny. I go party like a board gamer.